In this video, I'm going to show you some basic kubectl commands and how to create and debug pods in Minikube. So now we have a Minikube cluster and kubectl installed. And once the cluster is set up, you're going to be using kubectl to basically do anything in the cluster, to create components, uh, to get the status, etc. So first thing, we are going to just get the status of the nodes. So we see that there is one node, which is a master, and everything's going to run on that node because it's a mini cube. Um, so with kubectl get, I can check the pods and I don't have any. That's why no resources. I can check the services, kubectl get services. And I just have one default service and so on. So this kubectl get, I can list any Kubernetes components. So now, since we don't have any pods, we're going to create one. And to create Kubernetes components, there is uh, a kubectl create command. So if I do help on that kubectl uh, create command, I can see available commands for it. So I can create all these components using kubectl create, but there is no pod on the list because in Kubernetes world, the way it works is that the pod is the smallest unit of the Kubernetes cluster. But usually in practice, you're not creating pods or you're not working with the pods directly. There is an abstraction layer over the pods that is called deployment. So this is what we are going to be creating and that's going to create the pods underneath. And this is a usage of kubectl create deployment. So I need to give a name of the deployment and then provide some options. And the option that is required is the image because the pod needs to be created based on certain, some image or some container image. So let's actually go ahead and create Nginx deployment. So kubectl create deployment. We let's call it nginx deployment um, image equals nginx. It's just gonna go ahead and download the latest nginx image from Docker Hub. That's how it's gonna work. So when I execute this, you see deployment nginx deeple created. So now if I do kubectl get deployment. You see that I have one deployment created. I have a status here, which says it's not ready yet. So if I do kubectl get pod, you see that now I have a pod, which has a prefix of the deployment and some random hash here. And it says container creating. So it's not ready yet. So if I do it again, it's running. And the way it works here is that when I create a deployment, Deployment has all the information or the blueprint for creating the pod. The, the, this is the minimalistic or the most basic configuration for a deployment. We're just saying the name and the image. That's it. The rest is just defaults. And between deployment and a the pod, there is another layer, which is automatically managed by Kubernetes deployment called replica set. So if I do kubectl get replica set written together, you see I have an nginx dipple replica set um, hash and it just gives me a state. And if you notice here, the pod name has a prefix of deployment and the replica sets ID and then its own ID. So this is how the pod name is made up. And the replica set basically is managing the replicas of a pod. You in practice will never have to create replica set or delete a replica set or update in any way. You're going to be working with deployments directly, which is more convenient because in deployment, you can configure the pod blueprint completely. You can say how many replicas of the pod you want, and you can do the rest of the configuration there. Here with this command, we just created one pod or one replica. But if you wanted to have two replicas of the Nginx pod, we can just provide as additional options. So this is how the layers work 
first you have the deployment. The deployment manages a replica set. A replica set manages all the replicas of that pod. And the pod is, again, an abstraction of a container. And everything below the deployment should be managed automatically by Kubernetes. You shouldn't have to worry about any of it. For example, the image that it uses, I will have to edit that in the deployment directly and not in the pod. So let's go ahead and do that right away. So I'm going to do kubectl edit deployment. And I'm going to provide the name, Ginex. And we get an auto-generated configuration file of the deployment. Because in the command line, we just gave two options. Everything else is default and auto-generated by Kubernetes. Um, and you don't have to understand this now, but I'm going to make a separate video where I break down the configuration file and the syntax of the configuration file. For now, let's just go ahead and scroll to the image, which is somewhere down below. And let's say I wanted to fixate the version to 1.16 and save that change. And as you see, deployment was edited. And now when I do kubectl get pod, I see that the old pod, so this one here is terminating and another one started 25 seconds ago. So if I do it again, the old pod is gone and the new one got created with the new image. And if I do, if I get replica set, I see that the old one has no pods in it and a new one has been created as well. So we just edited the deployment configuration and everything else below that got automatically updated. And that's the magic of Kubernetes and that's how it works. Another very practical command is kubectl logs, which basically shows you what the application running inside the pod actually logged. So if I do kubectl logs and I will need the pod name for this, um, I will get nothing because Nginx didn't log anything. So let's actually create another deployment uh, from MongoDB. So let's call it Mongo deployment and the image and the image will be Mongo. So let's see. So now I have the MongoDB deployment creating. So let's go ahead and log that. This status here means that the pod was created, but the container inside the pod isn't running yet. And when I try to log, obviously it tells me there is no container running, so it can show me any logs. So let's get the status again. At this point, if I'm seeing that container isn't starting, I can actually get some additional information by kubectl describe pod and the pod name, which here shows me what state changes happened inside the pod. So it pulled the image, created the container and started container. So kubectl get pod, it should be running already. So now let's log it, kubectl logs and here we see the log output. So it took a little bit, but this is what the MongoDB application container actually logged inside the pod. And obviously if container has some problems, it's gonna help with debugging to see what the application is actually printing. So let's clear that and get the pods again. So another very useful command when debugging, when something is not working or you just want to check what's going on inside the pod is kubectl exec. So basically what it does is that it gets the terminal of that MongoDB application container. So if I do kubectl exec interactive terminal, that's what IT stands for. I will need the pod name dash dash flash. So, so with this command, 
I get the terminal of the MongoDB application container. And as you see here, I am inside the container of MongoDB as a root user. So I'm in a completely different setting now. And as I said, this is useful in debugging or when you want to test something or try something, you can enter the container, or get the terminal and execute some comments um, inside there. So we can exit that again. And of course with kubectl, I can delete the pods. So if I do get deployment, I misspelled that. So kubectl deployment, I see that I have two of them. And if I do kubectl get pod and replica set, I have also two of them. So let's say if I wanted to get rid of all the pods, replica sets underneath, I will have to delete the deployment. So delete deployment, and I'll have to provide the name of the deployment. I'm gonna uh, delete, let's delete MongoDB, delete it. And now if I'm gonna say kubectl get pod, the pod should be terminating. And if I do get replica set, the MongoDB replica set is gone as well. And the same if I do delete deployment, Nginx depot and do the replica set, see everything gone. So all the CRUD operations, create, delete, update, etc., happens on the deployment level and everything underneath just follows automatically. And the similar way, way we can create other Kubernetes resources like services, etc. However, as you notice, when we are creating uh, Kubernetes components like deployment using kubectl create deployment, um, and I misspelled it all the time, you'll have to provide all these options on the command line. So you'll have to say the name and you'll have to specify the image and then you have this option one, option two, uh, etc. And there could be a lot of things that you want to configure in a deployment or in a pod. And obviously it will be impractical to write that all out on a command line. So because of that, in practice, you would usually work with Kubernetes configuration files, meaning what component you're creating, what the name of the component is, what image is it based off, and any other options. They're all gathered in a configuration file and you just tell kubectl to execute that configuration file. And the way you do it is using kubectl apply command. And apply basically takes the file, the configuration file as a parameter and does whatever you have written there. So apply takes an option called minus F that stands for file. And here you would say the name of the file. So this will be the config file dot YAML. This is the format that you're usually going to use for configuration files. And this is the command that executes whatever is in that configuration file. So let's actually call it configuration file, um, I don't know, nginx deployment. And let's go ahead and create a very simplistic, super basic uh, nginx deployment file. So here I'm gonna create that file. So this is the basic configuration for the deployment. So here I'm just specifying what I want to create. I want to create a deployment, the name of the deployment. You can ignore these labels uh, right now. Uh, how many replicas of the pods I want to create. And this plug right here, the template and specification is a blueprint for the pods. So specification for the deployment and specification for a pod. And here we're just saying that we want one container inside of the pod with nginx image, and we are gonna bind that on port 80. So this is gonna be our configuration file. And once we have that, we can apply that configuration. So, so deployment created. So now if I get pod, I see that nginx deployment pod was created and it's running. And let's also see the deployment was created 52 seconds ago. 
And now if I wanted to change something in that deployment, I can actually change my local configuration. For example, I wanted two replicas instead of one. I can apply that again. Deployment, Nginx deployment configured. And as you see, the difference here is that Kubernetes can detect if the Nginx deployment doesn't exist yet, it's going to create one. But if it already exists and I apply the configuration file again, it's going to know that it should update it instead of creating a new one. So if I do get deployment, I see this is the old one or the old deployment. And if I do kubectl get pod, I see the old one is still there and a new one got created because I increased the replica count, which means that with kubectl apply, you can both create and update uh, a component. And obviously you can do kubectl with services, volumes, any other com Kubernetes components, just like we did it with the deployment. So in the next video, I'm going to break down the syntax of the configuration file, which is pretty logical and simple actually to understand. And I'm going to explain all the different attributes and what they mean. So you can write your own configuration files for different components. So to summarize, we've looked at a couple of kubectl commands in this video. We saw how to create a component like deployment, how to edit it and delete it. We saw how to get status of pods, deployments, replica sets, etc. We also logged on the console, whatever application is writing it to the console in the pod. And we saw how to get a terminal of a running container using kubectl exec. And finally, we saw how to use a Kubernetes configuration file to create and update components using the kubectl apply command. And last but not least, we saw kubectl describe command useful when a container isn't starting in a pod and you want to get some additional troubleshooting information about the pod. Thanks for watching the video. I hope it was helpful. And if it was, don't forget to like it. This is a video series, so I will create a new one every week. So if you want to be notified whenever a new video comes out, then subscribe to my channel. Um, if you have any questions, if something wasn't clear in the video, please post them in the comment section below and I will try to answer them. So thank you and see you in the next video.